Hello, my name is Peggy Butler. I am the co-founder and secretary of the Pennsylvania Firefly Festival here in Forest County, Pennsylvania. I want to share some stories with you in the next 10 minutes from four passionate people who know about, love, and want to help fireflies continue to bring awe and wonder for generations to come. We begin today's story with our newest and youngest member of our 2021 PATH team on the morning after a glow and know camp out sponsored by PATH in Fayette County, Pennsylvania, near Ohio Pio State Park. I'm a summer research intern with Pennsylvania Firefly Festival. Um, when I was young, I was always in the woods catching critters, salamanders, bugs, and I vividly remember going out on summer nights and catching fireflies and putting them in a jar and just watching them. And I think that this curiosity with fireflies never really left me. So I'm studying biology at Tufts now and I was looking for a summer internship and I think that this one really piqued my interest. I think other people want to see fireflies because it reminds them of their childhood and sort of the best times of their childhood, those summer nights, um, school's out, summer vacation, and you're just out there catching fireflies with your friends, and I think it reminds them of that. I think a big concern I have with ecotourism in general is thinking of nature in a more anthropocentric way, that it's there for us to see and not like just in itself what it is so I think I have worries about that and also the trampling large crowds going to see the fireflies and stepping on the larva stuff like that and light pollution from headlamps I think just knowing what they need for their life cycle and understanding that the larva forms are just as important if not more important than the adult forms and protecting all life stages of the fireflies so this includes like not mowing the grass and leaving leaf litter on the ground and also um, dimming lights so that the fireflies can mate at night. My name is Matt Meske, I'm a board member of the PA Firefly Festival. I oversee music for, for the Firefly Festival. Because people tend to uh, wipe their feet on anything with welcome written on it, you have to be careful. So people will, will appreciate it, but they'll appreciate it with sort of um, um, like an ambivalent ignorance. They just really don't know. And so, uh, you know, education is really essential to, to letting people know Sure, you can come out here and enjoy nature, but there are, there are some expectations. Well, I think uh, the real learning through experience is that, you know, more isn't always better. Limiting the size of the event, you know, maybe expanding to more days and different satellite events is a better way to reach people but on a more intimate level um, and, and really kind of instead of looking at the entertainment aspect of the uh, you know of the event like the the, the light show uh, you know it's appreciate the light show understand why it happens and that it's a, a fragile gift St. Francis said, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And I think like, well, okay, I can't have a great impact on everything horrible that's going on in the environment, but I can affect what I do in my own yard. So uh, we have a natural yard. Luckily, some of my neighbors do too, but we don't use any, uh, no, no herbicides, no insecticides. We have a lot of natural things going on in the yard. Uh, in the fall, I don't go nuts getting up every leaf. You know, I leave some leaves. And I also have a, a couple of dedicated little brush piles off to the side, kind of out of the way, where the neighbors can't see. And uh, then, because I know that uh, 
that that's a place for the hidden life of, of the fireflies. Light pollution, of course, it impacts human beings as well as a lot of other species and fireflies in particular. So uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing a dark backyard. We do it pretty much all summer long, if you can. My name is Jeffrey Calton, and I am currently president of the Pennsylvania Firefly Festival Association. And certainly marketers have learned when you want to attract attention, you use flashing lights. I think we're just naturally attracted to the firefly, which that's what they use to in part of their life cycle is to attract mates with their flashing lights. And we found that having uncontrolled crowds which seem to be present at times with certain firefly events that you can damage the, the habitats they're living in as well as the fireflies themselves. So I think that's our main concern was preserving the habitat for future generations of fireflies and people but to limit their exposure to us because we can damage them. Again, we learned several years ago that our festival had too many people and they were everywhere. They were just uncontrolled. I mean, they were controlled, but to a point. And they were venturing into areas that we knew there were fireflies. And we realized we had to limit the crowds. We had to train our volunteers to know how to control crowds, and to teach people in general about let's respect this life form, and it transformed the way we did our festival. Learn all you can. There's so much that you can find on social media, uh, books, magazines, all sorts of information that you can learn about fireflies, the threats to them, being light pollution, pesticides, uh, uncontrolled activity in their areas and I think it will educate people to preserve these things that we love so much. Hi, my name is Ken Butler and I'm treasurer of the Pennsylvania Firefly Festival. Well, we know from experience now having going into our ninth year that the worldwide population of fireflies is declining. The reality is around the world that the synchronous fireflies as well as all other fireflies are being negatively impacted. I come from the business world, so for me, when we first started thinking about doing the PA Firefly Festival, I went into business mode and thought about, let's have a lot of growth, let's make sure we have plenty of people coming, and then having experienced exponential growth, we discovered that we had 1,100 people show up on a given day, which overwhelmed all of us. And we started realizing after Dr. Sarah Lewis came and visited, us, uh, visited with us that we were impacting the habitat. So the very thing that we, that we want could be impacted negatively to the point where they disappear. Well, we certainly downsized the number of people. Uh, the COVID pandemic started us in a direction where we knew we had to downsize. But then we realized after that experience in 2020 that smaller is better. Smaller certainly has a better impact on the fireflies. We don't have the, the, the overwhelming number of lights in the forest. We have people now that can really spend time and learn about fireflies where before with so many people, we just couldn't spend time with everybody. I think people need to mow less. That means if you have a small lot, you may want to have some of it go natural. If you have a big lot of property, you may choose to not mow maybe half of it or maybe a quarter of it. I know here at the Firefly Farm, we have gone from mowing about six acres down to mowing one acre, and that really has had a positive impact on the population of fireflies. Also, stop using pesticides. We have to stop the overuse of pesticides in our urban lawns and our suburban lawns, and even in the area of agriculture, stop using as much pesticides.
and light pollution is the last. Less light means the fireflies can procreate better. So if you can reduce your lighting in your home, you're better off. We started using solar lights now for our outside lighting and it's been a, a tremendous improvement because all the light gets pushed down. It's at a very low brightness and so it really reduces the footprint of, of light around our home that, that used to exist. Hope you've enjoyed our story and have been inspired to watch, appreciate, and protect fireflies everywhere.